Hey guys, how's it going? Um, just after the last video, I decided to make some uh, JavaScript tutorials. I actually didn't make any tutorials, but I made lessons for my students. So um, <clears throat> the last tutorial I published was about Conway's Game of Life. And I realized once we did this game, where each of these cells is basically checking um, the cells around it, you can basically think about this game right here where it's going through and counting the cells around it. This is just like Minesweeper. So I thought, let's make pro um, let's go ahead and make Minesweeper. So of course, I was just learning JavaScript, so I went ahead and made Minesweeper on here. So now I've got a, my own form of Minesweeper on here. So what I thought was, I'd go ahead and finish the tutorial series in Java. Um, I just get excited when I learn a new language, so I was like really enjoying the JavaScript. And JavaScript is a lot easier for the internet, but one thing it sucks about it is, right click when you do the right click which is used to flag if you're using Chrome it like inspects it so it's kind of like actually sucks to build this in the JavaScript or p5 version of processing because then you have to like think of another way so what I did was I made a flag like this so I can flag it like this and then oh gosh anyways you get the idea and then you take it off when you don't want to flag it and then of course if you lose you lose so let's go ahead and build it so I set up a blank um, program, <laughs> I'm calling it my sweep, and we're going to go ahead and build this from start to finish. And um, I'll fast forward a lot of the things, but, but basically I just kind of want to talk you through the idea. Minesweeper is going to be a little bit more challenging than Conway's Game of Life because Conway's Game of Life just kind of goes on its own. Whereas Minesweeper, you're playing a game, so you have the, the mouse is going to be clicking on squares, and that's going to change um, how the the board reacts. So even though a lot of it's the same in principle, and we're going to apply the same ideas, it's going to be a little bit more difficult in terms of the interaction. And the code will probably get a little bit more messy. I'm not 100% sure where this is going to go, but I know how to do it. So obviously, you saw the one I built in JavaScript. And I know Java better than JavaScript. So. Um, let's go ahead and make a class cells. So um, what I decided is, I'll, first I'll just say what I want to do. I'm going to make a class called cell, and I'm going to make a 2D array. And one of the things I'm going to put in the, <clears throat> so I'm just going to use the index of the array, so the as the x's and the y's, and then all these cells are going to have properties like how many bombs are around them. Are they a bomb? You know, are they a mine or whatever you want to call it? Um, has it been revealed? You know, like there's a whole bunch of things that I've already thought about ahead of time. So if you haven't considered Minesweeper and you're trying to build this on your own, just think about all the things that one square has to do. And that way, when you build your class, you can kind of write that into the method. But for sure, it's going to be a little bit better to use um, a, a separate class. So have them be objects. So each cell is basically an object. It knows its x, it knows its y, it knows um, we're going to use the same kind of format with the number of cells will be defined by the user and then it'll calculate everything from there. So let's go ahead and make a class cell, but first I'll just say what I want to do um, and then we'll test it. So we'll go class, uh, double array of cells, okay, and then we'll do um, cell equals new cell and we'll just do num cells and num cells. So I do know that there's different versions out there, by the way, and I'm going to play the version where it's just a square, but you couldn't actually change this later, and I'm gonna write it, so I'm not just gonna use num cells all the time, so the code might get a little bit, a little bit long. But anyways, let's go ahead and do this now. We'll say for int i equals zero, i is less than um, cell dot length and then I plus plus so this is why I'm not just going to use num cells because if I decide to make it a rectangle and I'm not going to use these same parameters I don't want to have to rewrite that code so uh, for int j equals 0 j is less than cell 0 dot length j plus plus all we're going to do is make new cells so we'll say cell I J equals new cell. Okay, so let's go ahead and write class cell so we can just make sure it's working. 
So we'll call this cell. It's really hard to read. I'm sure you couldn't read it, but anyways, I, I can't make this bigger for some reason. So let's go ahead and say class cell. And let's see. So we want to have a few different things. <clears throat> let's see. Let's do int. Do we need the x and a y? Let's just go ahead and declare them. Um, we're going to need a float w. No, we don't actually need to. We can just use the global float for the w. So we'll just do that all global. Um, let's see. We're going to need a boolean is mine. If it's a mine or not. We'll have another boolean for is revealed. So once you've checked it, we'll make another it for count. So how many my, how many neighbors are mines? Let's see, what else do we need it to do? I don't think it should be okay for now. Let's just try making, um, so how are we going to do this? I think we'll just do um, is mine equals false. I guess we can just leave that alone actually. So I don't think we need to put anything in there for now. Let's just go ahead and try this. Um, and then we'll do void um, show. So we'll show the mines. What we're going to do when we show them, we'll say if um, is mine. So if it's a mine, we'll fill with zero. We'll still make it black. We'll let black be mines. And then we'll say else for now, fill uh, white. So we'll make them white. Okay. So far, so good. Okay, okay. All right, so then what we want to do, we want to do a rectangle. Yep, so we'll do x times um, w, comma y times w, comma w, w. <clears throat> so the x is going to be the coordinate of where it is, and the y will be the y coordinate of where it is. This is going to be, because obviously I don't want it to be two pixels, so it'll be however wide each box is. And then, so there'll be boxes, so it'll be squares. So what I actually want to do is, I'm going to pass in two variables. I'll do int x and y. Whoops, not here, in, the, in here. So I'll do uh, int x, int y, and I'll say this dot x equals x and this dot y equals y. So what I'm gonna do is, when I create these cells in the first page, I'll, I'll pass in the indexes, i and j, and that'll basically make that cell always equal to that, so I won't have to remember where it came from. So I'll just put that in here, i comma j. Okay, so I'm gonna pass in these integers, and let's just see if that works. Okay, so far so good. So I didn't display anything, So, it, but there's no errors. So let's go ahead and copy this right here. And what I'm going to do is I'll just do dot show. Okay. So far, so good. All right. So they're all not mines. <laughs> so they're all white. Hey, so, so far, so good. I think I've done it right. Okay. So what we're going to do is let's go ahead and we'll write a method called place mines okay so let's go ahead and write that method down here oh I didn't declare how many mines I have oh yeah I did num mines right num cells so I'll just say mines so I'll say num cells is 20 I'll just make mines equals um, 30 whatever that, these are the kinds of things that you're going to change based on what level they're playing anyway. So we'll just make it all dependent on that. And then when we run the setup, when we restart the game or we want to change the level, we'll just have to edit that code to be, to be something that the user can control. So it won't just be the setup. But let's just say um, while num, or I just saw mines, is greater than zero. Um, all right, so I want a random integer. Int a equals, we'll make it an integer, and we'll do a random between um, zero and cell dot length. So however long the x's are, and we'll do the same thing for b. 
So what I'm going to do is just let the computer randomly decide where to put these. So remember X and Y, I, J, A, B. I'm just going to try to use different letters occasionally, but essentially I'm always going to let the Y coordinate be the second part of the array. So the second in the array. So they might not be the same, so that's why I'll sometimes use this, the first array. That's the the array's length in the first dimension versus how long each array inside that array is. So I don't know if that made sense. You know, 2D arrays, by the way, I finally get them. So um, if you're like totally confused by the 2D arrays, keep doing these games. All these games are basically designed to teach 2D arrays. Um, I'm not even sure if they're really 2D arrays or not, but <clears throat> I mean, sometimes the way I think about them is just like a grid, but um, you can do all sorts of different things with them. So let me go ahead and keep going. So what I'm going to say is if cell A, B um, is mine, dot is mine. So I want to say if it's not a mine, actually. So I'll put an explanation point. So if it's not a mine, so if this is not a mine, what I'm going to do is make it a mine. And I'll also subtract a mine. Is it mines? Did I do mines? Yeah, mines. So I'll subtract one of the mines. OK? And that'll occur as long until I run out of mines. So the reason I do this statement is because I don't want to like place a mine in the same place. So if it's if it is, it just redoes this loop. So it just makes a new values until eventually they're all placed. And so let's go ahead and try this. Hopefully we see some black squares. Okay, that didn't work. Is mine. So mines is thirty. Place mines. Place mines as well, mines is greater than zero. Create a random integer. And if that is a mine, if it's not a mine. Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, drink some coffee. Yay! I'm not a total idiot. I just, uh, my logic was was a little bit off off there okay so we've got these randomly appearing mines okay so so far so good so now what we want to do is we want to take in our cell class so we know this is all working that's good so now what we want to do is we want to count up how many mines are around it so this is the exact same code as Conway so I'll go ahead and speed this up um, I'll write it in a method so I'll do place mines and then I'll do count mines Okay, so let's go ahead. This is all in our setup, by the way, so we're not going to do this every time. So this is just going to be done the first time. So let's go ahead and write void count lines. And I'm going to go ahead and do this the same way as I did with the Conway. Except actually, um, I'll just talk you through this because I'm not going to do um, the condition with the modulus because I don't want to wrap around where I'm counting the neighbors. So if you know what I'm talking about, um, we're going to loop through the whole thing, but you know, let me just start it and so you'll see. So if I go from i equals 0, i is less than cell dot length i plus plus for j equals 0, j is less than cell 0 dot length. This is fun. Did you guys have fun? I mean, I am. I just have fun. So, I mean, these tutorials, I'm mostly just having fun. <laughs> what is this about? Missing curly bracket. That goes with that. Huh. Hopefully, it's this one. Yep, okay. For int, I'm used to JavaScript where you can just declare them once and then that's it. Alright, so int r equals zero so what we're gonna do is we're gonna check all of the neighbors so we're gonna check all the cells around it so pick a cell like this one. Oh, let's pick one that's not so like this one right here so how many mines so this should be a two right because if you count around it which there are eight squares around it we're gonna so we're gonna count two mines but this one will be a zero there's no mines around it so how do we count 
Well, this index would be x and y. In this case, it would be 1, 1, right? So this would be 0, 1. This would be 0, 0. This would be 1, 0, 2, 1, or 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 2, etc. So if you look at the cells around it, they're all offset by 1 or from negative 1 to positive 1, okay? So that's how far we're going left and right. So you gotta be careful if you're gonna let it check this cell because it's going to like check a negative and that'll be out of bounds. So same thing with over here. If I let this cell check, so one thing we did in Conway's is we just did ones, okay? And that way you don't have to worry about the step. However, um, you have to count them in, um, in Minesweeper. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it the, the hard way. Not really, it's not that hard, it's just, it's just a little tedious, but I'm going to try to make it as clear as possible. So what we want to do is we want to check all. So first of all, we'll say count equals zero. Okay. Actually, cell, cell i j dot count equals zero. So the, the cells count equals zero. I guess we could make it. That doesn't matter. Yeah, let's do that. Let's make a variable, <clears throat> a global one that will count. We'll just call it counter. So not to be confused. Not that it matters, but we'll just say counter. So we'll declare it and then we'll just assign it to it at the end. So we'll so set counter equal to zero. And then we'll say if um, cell i minus one, so the one to the left of it, j minus one dot is mine. Okay, if that's true, then what we'll do is we'll do counter plus plus. Okay, so this is exactly like what we did in Conway's with the exception of using the modulus, okay? So I'll go ahead and do the rest of these. So that's the top left neighbor. I'll go ahead and do the rest of these and then speed it up a little bit. Okay, so I finished all of these. So now if I do this, you'll see I'll get a no pointer or not out of bounds exception. So that's not what I want. But just to make sure this is working, let's go ahead and just temporarily see if this is counting. So we'll just count from the inside. So if I just go from one, oh, and I have to do minus one here. So let's do that. So we'll just right now, just to test our method, we'll just see if this is actually working the right way. So what we'll do is after we've counted them up, we'll say cell, ij dot count er not count <laughs> equals counter so we'll assign the count of it equal to that and so that should work fine okay so what we'll do is in the show we'll say if is revealed okay if the cell is revealed then what we'll do is we'll say um, text um, at x times w comma y times w comma oh that's the location what are we going to text we're going to text um, no not we'll just say uh, the count oh my gosh. <laughs> we're going to text the number if it's revealed so what we'll start with is we'll do is revealed this dot is revealed you don't have to write it this, but it's just clear. And you do in JavaScript, so that's why I started doing that. So we'll just make them all true. Okay, so now you see these little numbers. Let's go ahead and make the text size a little bigger. Okay, so we'll say text size. We'll just say, oh, let's do however tall it is we'll just, or wide it is. So that way the text will grow with our cells. Okay, so you can see these are kind of working. But let's look at this. So this one says zero, but th there's a there's a mine right next to it. And this one says two, and there's only one. But actually, the, what this is actually working, what's actually happening is that this zero goes with this one. The reason I know this, it took me a while to figure out. We see how it's black. <laughs> so that's a fill of black. So that actually goes with this cell. And this one goes in this cell. The way it works with text, when you draw a box, 
it draws it the positive y for height and positive x for width. Okay, but with text, if you put it at x y, it draws it above it. So the fact that it draws above it, not below it, means that when you look at the square, it's actually below it. So you've got to change that. So actually, what I'm going to do is in the text where we do this is the y, all you have to do is do plus one. So that'll put it one cell below it, and then it'll actually match up, you'll see. Of course, now you won't see any of them because they're all the same color as their square. So what we'll do is we'll make them a color that we can see. And later on, we're going to change the colors anyway. So let's make it blue, for example. OK, so I think this is going pretty good. Yay. OK, so now you'll see it's counting correctly. So like this one, let's see, let's pick this one. So this one says three, and there's three around it. Same with those. So those are all doing pretty well. But now we've got to figure out how to deal with the outside. OK. So our code is good, but <clears throat> we're gonna have to basically, we want this to be a zero, this to be a zero, and we don't wanna subtract one, because these are the edges. We wanna go all the way to the borders. There's kind of a few ways of doing this, I'm sure, but I'm just a high school teacher, so I'm just going to write a condition. So I'm gonna write if, <clears throat> so in this case, i has to be greater than zero, and j has to be greater than zero. So I'll say i is greater than zero, and j is greater than zero. Then that okay. So basically, this will keep this one in bounds. So now, when I run it, I'll get an out of bounds exception on the next one. So that's good. So you kind of get the idea. I'm just going to do that for all of them, and then it should work. Okay, so had a little bit of trouble, but I got it to work. And I also just changed the dimensions to make sure that it would work no matter if I had a rectangle, <clears throat> excuse me, or a square. I think that the most popular versions are rectangles, but there's a square version, of course. But I'm going to go ahead and stick with a rectangle just because, of course, it will work for a square. And that just means that I was doing the right ones on all of these. So if you look at any of these, they're all correct. So there's f four black ones around this one. There's one around this one. Um, there's none around the corners. I don't actually need the mines to know their count. So, but anyways, that is pretty cool. So that's all working pretty well. Um, what I want to do, actually, you know what? I don't want the mines. Um, hmm. I can easily just change that to something else. But we'll just leave that for now. I was thinking because when you hit a zero and you explode the whole board. You really want to make sure that you reveal all the other zeros. And if there's a zero that's a mine, I don't want to reveal a mine. That's okay. I'll just do that in the uh, in the uh, reveal part. So right now everything is revealed, so we can see everything. But later on we can change that so they're not revealed. Okay. So now what are we going to do? Um, what we want to do is oh, so let me just show you the code just in case you didn't really catch it all. So all of these if statements basically are the same. The one thing is I had to add these negative ones because I forgot you have to, you're moving over one and you can't let it equal. So it has to be even one less than however long it is. So all of your lengths should have a minus one at the end of them. And then once you get that, it should work. Okay, so um, now that we've got it counting, okay, so we've got that makes the mines, count the mines. Um, what we want to do now, <coughs> oh, I mean, we should probably hide all the mines. Yeah, let's do that. Let's hide the mine. Well, hiding them is pretty easily easy. You just basically do this, right? <coughs> Make them not revealed. Okay, so 
Ooh. Um, if is mine. Hmm. I think we want this to be is revealed, right? Huh. Let's see. We don't want this thing to be revealed unless we click on it. Okay, so I want that to stay hidden. So I think what I can do. So what I'll do is I'll just say all of this is if it's revealed. Yeah. So I think I'm going to take this condition out. Actually, I'll just do this. I'll just put all this all of this right here cut that out and only do it if it's revealed and so I'll say well, it's all messed up now all my indentation is all messed up so let's go ahead and make it so that it if it's revealed and it is a mine, we fill zero, else we do this, and let's do the text only on the zeros. So we're not going to write the text on the mines, because they're mines. We don't care how many mines are around them, we, already, we just lost. So if it's... Oh. Hmm. Let's just see this now. Okay, so everything's black. <laughs> okay. We'll say else. Uh, this is, yeah, if it's. Oh my gosh. This is the worst. Oh my god. <laughs> I've like made a huge mess of all this. Okay, else we'll just do fill two five five and rect x times w. I probably am really missing something obvious, but I'll just do it the way that for sure will work. Okay, so now it's all there, and let's do this now. Let's go down here. So our main control. So this is not really that. That's the counting mines, that's the placing mines. So let's do the mouse, let's do all the mouse stuff near the draw function. That's our, this is our main program. <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll do um, void mouse um, pressed. And so what we'll do is uh, we'll actually do this whole thing again. We'll do, I don't know, we'll do int a equals mouse x divided by the width of each cell. We'll do int b equals mouse y divided by the width of each cell. So that's going to basically, oh, we have to turn these into integers. So we're going to be able to I like pass the indexes. <clears throat> so the mouse x and y will turn into that divided by w. I guess I have to change that into an integer because it's a float. Okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, what we'll do is we'll do cell a b dot is revealed equals true. Let's try that. Okay, that's a mine. There's a one. Okay, so now it's all working. Okay, so that's pretty good. So what I want to do. Hmm. So do I really just want to reveal it? Um, what I actually want to do is um, if I click on it, because what if it's a zero? I want it to reveal everything else. So I want it to like show everything else. I just thought of something else. Oh. Okay, so if is revealed equals true. Oh, I have an idea. Let's make void reveal 
all. And this is like if you hit a mine, basically. And we'll just go through the whole um, thing. So we'll go through all of the cells. So I'll just copy this. So if we hit a mine, what we'll do is we'll just do is revealed equals true. So what we'll do is we'll say if cell <coughs> AB <coughs> dot is mine, if it is mine, reveal all. This is not how I did it. This is not how I did it on the other version, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> All right, let's find a mine. Oh, there's got to be a mine. There, yay, so that works. Okay, so we died. That's good. So let's do another thing. I just realized, let's make a flag Boolean. So we'll have, we also want to have the case for making it Boolean is flagged. So we want to be able to flag them. And so we actually don't need to declare these as false. We'll just say, so we'll say if is revealed, if is mine, else, da da da. What we can do is we can write else if um, is flagged. Okay, if it's flagged, fill with red. Okay, and then we can write else and the other part. I'm sure that I could just be drawing these. I just don't want all of these to be drawn over. All right, let's try this. Okay, so now, how are we gonna flag it? <clears throat> so in the mouse press, what we can do is we can do, so we'll find the, we'll say if mouse button, I think, equals right. Okay, then what we'll do is we'll do cell A, B dot uh, is flagged equals true. So we'll just flag it. Okay, and then we'll say else, and we'll do the other part. That should make sense, right? That should work, don't you think? So then this would have to be indented. So we're not gonna wanna do any of that if it's right click. So there's flagged. Oh, <clears throat> so I wanna be able to unflag it. I guess I can just click it. But <clears throat> let's actually also do that. We'll say <clears throat> if so a b dot is flagged, if it's already flagged, then we'll say so a b is flagged equals false else cell a b is flagged is true okay is flagged okay okay so we're doing pretty good we're almost there I mean, kind of. So now what do I need to do? I need to, not a lot actually. So I do need to count the mines. Okay, so let's do this. Um, let's build a counter that will count the mines. Um, we'll just call it score. So we'll call it the score variable. And <clears throat> we'll say, what we'll do is we'll say score this is it. We'll do. We'll set it equal to the number of mines, because we're going to subtract. That number is going to go to zero. So at we'll, the beginning, we'll set it equal to the number of mines. Okay. So the score will be thirty, and then what I'll do. So I'll say, um, let's call it um, the win game. We'll say we'll say end game. So. We'll call it the end game, and what we'll do is we'll say if 
Oh boy, I gotta write this. Void end game. So what we'll do is we'll say if score um, double equals zero. All right. <clears throat> if score double equals zero, we'll just say reveal all. Okay, so that's pretty simple. So basically we're looking for when we get to zero. So we started however many there are. So what we'll do is we'll, when we flag it, okay, so flagging, let's say we flag it, we get a point. <laughs> we're gonna subtract a point, okay? So um, if is flagged, we'll say that is false, okay? So this is just changing the state of being flagged. So what we'll do is before we do this, we'll say if, so if we flag it, and it is already flagged, we'll say if cell a b dot is mine. So if it's a mine and we unflag it, right, then what we're going to do is we're going to do score plus plus. Remember, we want the score to get to zero. <laughs> so that's actually bad. And over here, if it isn't flagged, if we flag it and it is a mine, so we'll say if cell a b dot is mine so if it's a mine we want score to go down get closer to zero that's probably the worst way to write that method but it makes sense in my head so this is all about let's go ahead and so this is just for flagging with um, right click check for mines So that we actually don't need to worry about doing anything else, and this will be um, this will be for if left click. This is just making this even longer, but whatever. Okay, so let's just to make it easy, let's make the number of cells two. <laughs> or oh, sorry, not number of cells, number of mines. We'll we'll make just a few mines. Uh, we'll make three. Three mines, just so we can check. Okay, hopefully I can find these without the... Oh, no. Oh, there's one here. Oh, darn it. Oh, man. Okay, I think it's going to work. So let's first go ahead and do the uh, zeros. So how are we going to... How did I do that? So let's see. When we do the left button, if we do, so instead of this, let's do, um, let's cut this. Let's just call it check cell A, B. So we'll pass in those parameters and we'll write that here. So we'll say void check cell and it passes in int A and int B. <clears throat> Let's just make sure that my brain is working. Sorry, I'm kind of a stickler with the whole indentation thing, so. Okay, so everything's working the same. So what we want to do, so if, so here's where it gets fun, because we're gonna use recursion to check if it's a zero. So what we can do is we can say if cell a b dot count equals zero, and say and cell a B dot is mine is false so we'll say it's not a mine so if the count is zero and it's not a mine we'll do um, so what we want to do if it's a zero if it's a zero we want it to check cell a minus one b minus one let's just try that so we're gonna recur, use recursion, check cell. Uh, 
it? Why is it mad at me? Check cell. Does it exist? It sure does. Oh. I put the index. Okay, so this might cause some problems. Out of bounds. Okay, let's do something. Let's make more mines. I know it's going to be out of bounds because we don't want it to go. Let's find a zero. Okay, so it's working. So you see what happens? It finds a zero. So let's find another one. And it starts checking until it's not a zero. So that's actually what I want it to do. The reason it's getting out of bounds is because if you find a zero that's near the edge, it checks, it keeps going. And it's the same exact problem that we had when we were trying to do the count. So essentially, let's see. So all these little if statements that I had to do, all of that is going to be the same thing for all of these. So I want to recur everything, mm. but I also don't want it to get a maximum depth incursion. So if I have two zeros next to each other, I don't want them both just checking each other back and forth over and over again. So I just realized another thing. Uh, oh, I can just say if they're revealed. So since they'll get revealed, so I'll say so I'll say if it's in bounds and it has not been revealed. So first thing I can do is say, where am I? Oh, I'm in the wrong. <clears throat> so I don't think I explained that very well at all. So this is my recursion. Okay, so this is just one. So this is what we're gonna do. Use recursion to uh, open all the zeros. Okay, so basically all the zeros will just open up everything. So this is the part. So what we're also going to do is we're going to say, we're only going to allow this to happen if it's not a mine, it's not been counted, and, okay, also it's not been revealed. Okay, that's important because if I get a bunch of zeros next to each other, they'll just keep checking each other back and forth forever. And that's going to be, so not only do we have to worry about going off the board, we also have to worry about it just going back and forth forever. So that will be the maximum depth incursion or something like that. So that's the error you're gonna get if you do that. So all we have to do is before this, we just have to do if <coughs> um, A is greater than zero and B is greater than zero, okay? Ta -da. So that'll take care of that. Let's just double check that it works. Oh, that was a, a mine, so it doesn't tell us anything. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And is revealed. And has not been revealed. That should have worked. Oh, this right here. Needs to be in here. So if it's not been revealed, so hmm. huh. uh, doesn't count. It was a mine. Oh gosh! Hey, at least you guys know that I'm like, hey, it worked, and it didn't give me an out of bounds. Yay, yay, it's working. Okay, so now we're just gonna do that for the rest of them. So it's kind of a lot. So actually this condition right here is going to be on all of them. Uh, uh, but it will be a little bit different because it has to do with that. Okay, so actually I'll just copy and paste this and it won't take me that long to do. So what I'll do for the next one is I'll do the same conditions but I'll do it for just a minus 1b so I'll change all of these and then I no longer need this condition okay so let's see if that works let's get a zero eventually I'll hit a zero oh, geez. yay so it did that one and that one all right so let's just keep going this is fun I mean for me <laughs> I hope, so. I hope you think it's fun. All right, so this one will be B plus one. And then we'll do B plus one. 
and we have to throw in a condition that this can't go past the edge there so we'll say and b is less than cell b is the y so cell zero um, dot length minus one and has not been revealed so now let's double check all that yay so now it's checking that one that one and that one and then this one was a zero so check that one that one and that one okay and it didn't do these ones because that's a mine hey so we basically are finished guys like honestly in one sitting I haven't even finished my coffee yet. I finished minesweeper I still have to edit it though <laughs> all right so let me go ahead and so this is the we'll say left three neighbors so I can easily change that to the right three just copy this and do the right three I'm going to just change this to plus. So I'll change all these to pluses. Ah! Plus, plus, plus. Plus, plus, plus. plus. Now you probably could use a loop for all of this, but it's hard enough for me to understand it <laughs> without doing that, so I'm just going to write it out. This way I actually can follow it myself and how am I supposed to oh wait, so that link how am I supposed to expect any of my students to be able to follow it if <clears throat> I can't really even follow it so hunter go ahead <laughs> make your loop because I know that you're gonna want to do it anyway you're gonna look at all this code and you'll be like that's so inefficient <laughs> I was like no actually it's not that bad so only eight neighbors so we'll go ahead and do that so let's see if this is working Yay! Ooh. Oh boy. So I just still want to check above and below. So just the middle two, and we're done. So I hope you guys like that. Oh, I got so excited. You see that? So we're not going to have this one. We'll cut that guy out. We're not going to check ourselves. Okay, so we'll say um, B minus one, B plus one. So we'll just say A. And so we don't need to check the A condition because it's equal to itself. Ta da! Minesweeper. Oh, should we check it now? Let's do that. So now we can check that we can win. So let's make it like four. <laughs> Hopefully, I can win this game. All right, we're not actually, uh oh, out of bounds. Whoops. I don't know. Why is this out of bounds? It's a right three. If B is greater than zero, A is less than cell dot length. Do I have that wrong? Oh no. It's the same one. A is less oh yeah. Minus one. <laughs> Just about lost my brains. That would have been very scary. Okay. Let's try that again. <laughs> Yay. Now let's see if we win. Hey, it worked. Okay, so we won. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is I want to basically build um, a method that will make sure that we don't die on the first click. So let's say we had like um, 70 mines, right? Well, Oh crap, that's cells. We'll do 20. Let's just say we have 70 or 80 mines, right? We have a ton of mines. Now, I don't want you to die. I want to, oh, whoa, why do I have so many cells? Oh, I did 20. <clears throat> All right, so that'll be, now there's a good chance of you dying on the first try. Let's try again. So what we want to do is we want to ensure that, that first click basically blasts open um, a hole. So how do we do that? So what we can do um, we can make another boolean. Let's make a boolean called first click. Okay? And it's false. And so what we can do uh, we can place the mines and count mines and then we'll say um, if 
Okay, yeah, this will be fine. So we'll put all of this into an if statement. So the whole mouse thingy, we'll just indent it. <coughs> and what we'll do is we'll just say if first click, okay? So basically, the first click is not going to happen unless it's true. So we'll say, so if it's false, so like if the first click is false, what we'll do is we'll say, um, we'll do the same thing. Actually, I want this part, so let's cut this out. I want the, I want to know where we're clicking. So we'll only do it if it's false. <clears throat> so no matter what, we're going to get the location of the mouse click. This is a weird part, but you want to basically clear out the area around the first one clicked. So if it's not the first click, what we're going to do is we're going to say um, cell A minus 1, B minus 1 dot is mine equals false. Cell a minus one B dot is mine equals false. So, so this is just in case there are mines A minus one B plus one dot is mine equals false. And so a b minus one dot is mine equals false so we're just turning all of these mines just in case <clears throat> cell a b plus one dot is mine equals false cell a i just realized the problem I think we have a problem with my uh, counter, the score, because I'm going to erase some of these and the score won't be able to get to zero. Okay, whatever, we'll deal with it in a second. That's the problem with this game. You fix one problem, you make another one. <laughs> Isn't that the truth of everything? <laughs> so, cell A plus 1, B plus 1, that is mine equals false. This is probably a very long video already, so... Okay, okay. Now, no... Uh-oh. Oh, we forgot to change it. First click equals true. Didn't work. Okay, so what we need to do all this stuff that I do in the setup, I need to make sure, hmm, so I place them out, so I want to make sure this is all after. So I actually want to take this out, this one right here, I don't want to count the mines until after. Because those numbers, let's see if this works. I should have just left it. Okay, it worked. Okay, let's try it again. Well, I think that's pretty much it. I think we finished it. So, looks like our game is working. I mean, there's details you can do, but I don't want to like take up more of the video and you've probably watched enough <laughs> maybe fast forwarding um there's some little things you can do i'll just show you how to do them quickly but um obviously the flagging is cool and if you click on it it does that so that's that's working but you can also change the colors of these things so uh if you go into the cell now that we've got it working the game you can start doing the styling i'm not going to do it all but basically right here where you write the text you can just basically do something like, let's say, for example, if the count is equal to, um, I don't know, what was it? Uh, let's say one, we can just fill it red. So you can do a series of these, and um, you can also do.
do this, like if count. So let's just do this first so you can see. So basically, you can just have it so that the ones will be this color. And then if you want to do that, you could do if count equals two, be green, um, et cetera. I don't even know what the real colors are, but you can change the colors because I think that's part of it. And then Carlos, one of my students, was telling me he doesn't like the zeros. They look better if you just leave them open, um, which is okay. You can just do basically um, right here before the text, you can just say if count does not equal zero. So basically, if the count doesn't equal zero, then we'll do that. And we'll say, let's actually do this too. And is mine equals false. So we also won't do and. We don't have to do that. Um, if it's and is not a mine. Let's see. So now, let's get so now it doesn't show, and this way it also won't show the mines, the numbers. So a little stuff like that you can deal with, but the, the game is pretty done. You know, you can pretty much do whatever you want with it now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Let me know if you wanted me to show you how to do it in JavaScript. I'll probably make those tutorials, by the way, later. Um, my goal was to get all of my Java stuff done. I mean, they've got their AP test coming up here uh, in a couple months. So I want to get all the Java class finished but then I'll start making tutorials on JavaScript and um, that way if you're more interested in JavaScript so you can put it directly on the web. I will say this about JavaScript the one thing that kind of sucks is the right click button uh, if you're using Chrome um, most people use Chrome for their browser um, the right click does like an inspection and stuff like that so it's kind of a pain in the butt using a game that uses the right click so having a pop-up would be better than to just do it embedded on the p5 editor so just a little side note so hopefully you guys enjoyed it I didn't even finish my coffee and we finished the game so it's pretty awesome so talk to you guys later